Isang mapagbalang araw po sa ating lahat, Church. Binabati ko po ang bawat isa ng maligayang, maligayang bagong taon. Basahin po natin ang pangako ating Panginoon sa mga awi chapter 46 verse 1. Ang Diyos ang aking lakas at kandungan at handang sa klolo kung may kaguluhan. Sa mga awi chapter 91 verse 4. Lulukuban kanya sa lilim ng kanyang malapad na pakpak at sa kalinga niya ay palagi kang nang nakatitiyak. Iingatan niya at ipagsasangga lang pagkat siya ay tapat. Hallelujah. Purihin natin siya, Church. Ikaw ang aming kaligtasan, Panginoon. Sa iyong biyaya, ako ay namamangla sa iyong kalingan. Pangalaman. Sa piling mo 
Lord, we thank you for gathering us this morning. Lord, despite all of the turmoil, despite all of that is happening in the world today, you have gathered each one of us to listen to your word, Lord. Lord, you have called each of us, Lord, and each one who is watching this video now. They are the people who have responded to your call, and you are so pleased with them, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are even with us. Your presence is with us this morning. And we acknowledge that you will be the only one who will be teaching us today, God. Despite any condition that we may be in, you are sovereign, you are great, you are our one true God. Totoo nga po, Panginoon, na kayo ang sandigan ng aming puso at ito ay nahanap namin sa inyo, O Kristo. Ang pangalan po ninyo ang aming kanlungan. Mangusap po kayo sa amin ngayong araw, Panginoon. Handa po kaming makinig sa inyo. Buksan nyo ang aming mga puso, mga isipan para marinig namin ng maluwag, ng maliwanag ang inyong salita. And we will be blessed by your word, even God. Thank you for each one who is with us this morning. We offer you this time of worship, this time of your word in Jesus' name. Amen, Amen, Amen. Good morning everyone! Kumusta na po kayo? How is everyone doing? Marami pong pangyayari sa mundo. Marami tayong nakikita ang mga numero na nakaka-discourage. Pero ang numero unong Diyos natin, the only God that we have, He will remain sovereign, He is always in the throne, and He is always in control. As you might know, next week, yan na po yung fasting week natin. It starts tomorrow and will go through until Saturday. So marapat lang po na ang pag-usapan natin ngayon ay fasting. We will be talking about fasting in our preaching today. Minsan po nagkaroon kami ng coaching ni Erickson. Tapos tinanong ko sa kanya, Erickson, alam mo ba kung ano yung fasting? Ay oo, pastor, sabi niya, ang bilis na sumagot. Yung fasting po ay yung kakain ka ng mabilis. Sabi niya, eating fast? Talaga ka ako. Oo, saan kayo kumakain? Sa fast food po. Sabi ni Erickson. Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, Erickson, mag-uusap tayo. Sabi ko sa kanya, anyway, I was first introduced to fasting as a boy. Hindi pa ako nag-aaral nun. Kasi may nakikita akong picture sa kalendaryo. Tinanong ko yung lolo ko kung ano yon So he explained it that Pag merong ganun sa kalendaryo, there should be no food, no meat, at least ang kakainin daw ay fish and vegetables lamang, walang maglalaro. And there will be no making of paper airplanes, piling-pili ang mga music na pakikinggan, tapos kailangan namin makinig sa radyo ng lahat ng patungkol kay Jesus. Yun po yung explanation sa akin. Fasting has always been related to food. No eating or not eating the good food at least. So why do I have to do it? Ang explanation sa akin so that I could be cleansed from my sins. But what is fasting? Is it even necessary? Yung first na recorded na fasting sa Bible ay nasa Judges 20 verse 26. Ang sabi po dito, Then all the people of Israel, the whole army went up and came to Bethel and wept. They sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Yung word na fasting as we read it in English, ang root Hebrew word po nun ay tsum, as you see it on the screen, which means to abstain from food, but it finds its origins in the meaning na to cover the mouth. But the Israelites misunderstood what they were doing. Pagdating po sa Isaiah 58, the nation of Israel was abstaining from food and they were asking for help from God. But help does not come. So they complained. Anong ginawa ni God? He pointed out to the Israelites how they were oppressing the people. Isaiah 58 verses 9 and 10 says, Then you will call and the Lord will answer, you will cry for help and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, 
And if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will shine in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. Ano ang sinasabi ng Panginoon sa kanila? You are missing your meals. You are abstaining from food. Pero, ino-oppress nyo ang isa't isa. And that cannot be, sabi ng Panginoon. What does this mean for us? Fasting is not only abstaining from food, but it is abstaining from oppressing each other. Our heart should be right before God before we could even start abstaining from food. Pagdating naman sa New Testament, Jesus was instructing His followers on how to fast. Matthew 6, 16-18 says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you fast, Put on oil in your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only your Father who is unseen and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Hindi po tayo nagpa-fasting para ipakita sa iba. We fast in order not to look pious or righteous. Fasting is humbling ourselves before God. Although fasting is scheduled now, parang tayo, yung fasting natin starts tomorrow up to Saturday. There are churches who had their fasting in the previous week. Meron pang mid-year fast na sinasabi. So it is scheduled today. Pero nung panahon ni Jesus kasi, it was very strange for a devout person not to fast. In Luke 5.33, the crowd questioned Jesus. Tanong nila sa kanya, They said to him, John's disciples open fast and pray, and so the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. The people were looking at fasting as a dutiful behavior. It was a duty which they had to do, kasi yun ang nakikita nila sa Pharisees, yun ang nakikita nila sa followers ni John the Baptist. Sumagot si Jesus. Nung sumagot si Jesus, lalo silang nalito. Luke 5:34 and 35 says, Jesus answered, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days, they will fast. What was Jesus saying? Anong sinasabi ni Jesus sa kanila? While others are fasting as a religious duty, the disciples would see it out of a relationship. They are the friends of the bridegroom. The reply of Jesus was his way of unveiling the mystery behind fasting. Someday, yung friends na sinasabi niya would be part of the church, would be part of his bride as we know it. When he is taken from them, then they will fast. And Jesus was telling them that while others fast out of duty, His bride will fast because she delights in Him. While others fast to deprive themselves, His bride will fast because she desires Him. While others fast out of desperation, His bride will fast because she is devoted to Him. From duty to delight, from deprivation to desire, from desperation to devotion. For our purpose today, magpo-focus po tayo sa duty to delight. From duty to delight. Fasting from duty to delight. Pag-usapan po natin ang delight. Ano ba yung delight na yan? Tinanong ko ulit si Erickson sa aming fasting. Erickson, ano ba yung delight? Ang madali yan, pastor. Sabi niya, sabay turo pataas. Dun sa maliwanag. Pastor, that is delight. Kung minsan fluorescent, kung minsan LED, itong sa atin ngayon may ventilador pa. Sabi niya, sagot ko sa kanya, Erickson, mag-usap tayo. Sabi ko, Many of us observe the Bible to be so masculine. We see this when we read it. People tell us about it. Sobrang masculine. God refers to His people as sons, brothers, fathers, husbands, masters, farmers. Puro masculine ang referral niya. 
Pero, when Jesus talked about fasting, He gave a unique description of His people, His bride. The people are His bride. Obviously, Jesus was not referring to women only. Jesus was referring to both men and women or the church as His beloved bride. Revelation 19 verse 7 says, Let us be glad, rejoice, and give Him glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His bride has prepared herself. Now, let us consider a bride and groom relationship. It is not an ordinary male and female relationship. Bakit? Kasi, yung commitment level nila is much deeper, it is much higher, it is always fresh and new, and in this relationship, there is a different level of delight. What is in a bride and groom relationship that can be related to fasting? Ano ba ang, ano ba ang meron sa bride and groom relationship na pwede natin gamitin sa pag-aaral natin tungkol sa fasting? Unang-una, a bride and groom relationship is about excitement. Delight is about excitement. Notice the disposition of a bride to be. Lagi siyang excited. Nagre-research sa sa bridal magazines, sinasabihan niya lahat ng mga kaibigan niya tungkol sa wedding niya, pinipili ang invitation, design ng flowers, caterers, photographers, event coordinator, musician. Ano ba yung music na ipapatugtog, yung bridal car, anong decoration ng bridal car, bouquet parents, ano yung susuot ng parents niya, ano yung color motif. No detail is left unattended. She talks about her fiancé, and before she could even notice, ilang oras na yung nagdaan, hindi na pala siya kumakain, and she is just so excited, she did not even notice she was already fasting. This is what God is looking for in a relationship. The eagerness to spend time with Him and fill our hearts with His words. When was the last time you were so excited and consumed by your relationship with Jesus that you forgot to eat, that you missed your meal? That is fasting. That is fasting. Second we have is a bride and groom relationship is fascinating. Delight is about fascination. Fascination, as the dictionary puts it, is to hold spellbound by an irresistible power. It is to be captivated, enthralled, and spellbound. Parang nasaniban. You cannot eat, you cannot sleep, you cannot think. You just want to be with Him all the time. Psalm 27 verse 4 tells us, one thing I ask from the Lord, this do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple. Fascination, church, is not duty. A bride-to-be skips her meals not because it is her duty, but only because she is fascinated. She would rather be talking and spending time with her fiancé rather than be eating. Umiiwas siya sa appetizer, sa gravy, sa sweets, desserts, twister fries, mukbang, hindi na pwede sa kanya yan. She wants to perfectly fit into her gown. What she really desires is to look best, look her best for her groom. Fascinated means she is never bored. She could read her fiancé's messages again and again without getting bored. She is preoccupied with her fiancé that others may not even understand what is happening to her. They might not even understand her fascination. She is so gripped by her fiancé that no matter what she is doing, she is thinking about her fiancé. Through all the times that they have been with each other, the times that they spent together, the messages they exchange, she is developing a heart of extravagant devotion to her fiancé. Church, I ask you, are you captivated by Jesus? Are you never bored of Jesus? Can you read His messages again and again and again 
and still be fascinated each time. Think well, church. Think well. And the third that we have is a bride and groom relationship is a craving. Delight is about craving. Nung Christmas, nagkaroon ako ng craving ng Coke. A few months before Christmas, iwas ako ng iwas ng Coke. Pa konti, sobrang konti, konti lang. But I told myself, pagdating ng Pasko, iinom ako ng Coke. Nung kinumusta ako ni Ann, ang sagot ko sa kanya, mukhang na-overdose yata ako ng Coke, sabi ko sa kanya nun. To crave is to miss and want something so badly. A bride willingly misses her meals because she craves for the one she loves. She cannot eat, she cannot sleep, she is in love, she misses him. But church, do you miss God? Last Christmas, sa isang Bible study namin, we had a question which goes this way. How will this Christmas be different from all the rest that you had? I felt sad for those who replied na, Christmas will not be different from any other day. They said that every day is Christmas. This might sound good, but what did they do? What did they do? They turned the special day of Jesus, His birthday, into an ordinary day. Wala nang, wala nang unique fascination, no excitement, and no craving. Church, are you craving for the presence of God? Do you seek His presence? Do you crave to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple? How are your devotions? Kumusta ang quiet time mo, kapatid? Are they just things that you do every day? Like a procedure na pag nagawa mo na, susunod na, yung next na gagawin ko na, and everything, is it a duty for you to fulfill? Or do you still devour the word of God and His promises? Very often, our bridegroom is overridden by our craving for food or the things of this world. Food and things of this world may not necessarily be wrong, but when they override Jesus, wala nang excitement for Jesus, wala nang quiet time for devotions, ginagawa lang para makapag, makapag video games na pagkatapos, makapag tiktok na pagkatapos, parang duty or requirement na lang, tapusin ko lang to, then I'll go on with my life. Then we place priority on these things above Jesus, and then they become all wrong. When you fast, church, are you more focused on your prayer requests than on the presence of Jesus? Fasting makes us remember how precious God's presence truly is and what privilege it is for us to have a relationship with Him. This is what fasting should do to us. Jesus is telling His listeners that while the Pharisees were fasting as a duty, his bride will see it as a delight. They saw it as a discipline. His bride sees it as a fascination. They saw it as an obligation. His bride sees it as a craving. Excitement for Jesus, fascination for Jesus, craving for Jesus. That is fasting. Amen. Amen po ba? Maliwanag po ba? Maliwanag po ba? Pero di pa po tayo tapos. The question now is, where do our faith goals and prayer requests come in? Pastor, paano na yung mga faith goals namin? Pinalista mo eh. Saan napapasok lahat yon? Now church, I want you to think. I want you to think of how important and how personal these faith goals are. How big these requests are. Merong gustong magkabahay, magkanegosyo, gusto ng healing, gustong makatapos yung anak niya ng kolehyo, gustong umasenso yung negosyo niya. We have these big requests and then we lay them before Jesus Christ. My question is, how can you ask from your bridegroom for such big things if you are not excited fascinated, nor have a craving for Him. 
how can you ask for such personal things from a God whom you treat so impersonally? The problem is, ang problema po kasi natin is we are so excited, fascinated, and craving for our prayer requests and our faith goals, but not on the bridegroom. Para ito yung mga napapanood natin sa TV na magpapakasal, pero ang habol niya ay yung kayamanan ng pakakasalan niya. Magpapakasal lang kasi habol niya yung kayamanan. Yun ang sinasabi sabi sa ng mga tao. We abhor this act. We despise this act. We judge the people who do this. But church, that is what we do. When we are more focused and excited and fascinated and craving for our faith goals and prayer requests than on the bridegroom himself. Do not treat God as a genie. Stop treating God as a genie. It starts from being excited, fascinated, and craving for Jesus. John 15:7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. The Greek word which was translated to remain means abide, stand and continue but it also means to stay in relation or expectancy remain church means to be excited fascinated and to crave this is john 15 7 as we know it as we have always read it but allow me to rewrite it for you today based on what we have learned and it will look something like this if you are excited, fascinated, and craving for me, and are excited, fascinated, and craving for my word, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. As you fast, church, focus on delighting in Jesus by being excited by Him, by being fascinated by Him, and craving for Him and His word. This is fasting this is the focus of your fasting and at the fullness of your excitement fascination and craving the spirit will lead you to ask whatever you want and it will be done for you amen 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 in jesus name now do you receive the word today do you receive the word today? And I hope you are also excited. It is my prayer that you are excited to fast and face this week and go on with your fasting and be excited, be fascinated, and crave for Jesus. Now, we will not end our service without giving you a chance to receive Jesus into your life. If you are not at peace with Jesus, this is your time. Or you might have moved far from him siguro na namlay ka na nabang ka baka yung iba nagtampo and want to rededicate your life with to jesus pray with me this prayer join me in praying this lord jesus i believe that the wages of sin is death but i thank you for your gift of eternal life in you i repent of my sins Today, I surrender my life to you. Be my Savior and Lord in Jesus' name. Church, if you sincerely prayed that prayer, you are now a son or daughter and a disciple of Almighty God. Now, if you have no church yet, I'm giving you a personal invitation to join Compraise. I invite you to commit one year of your life and we will help you grow and come to know Jesus even more. And at the end of one year, your life will change for the better. But if you have a church, if you already belong to a church, please go back to your church and be a blessing to them. If somehow the Holy Spirit is leading you to come praise, our doors are always open for you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today, Lord. We thank you for teaching us once more and encouraging us about fasting. Lord, in this coming week, I pray that you would sustain everyone who would be fasting, 
that they would be more focused on you, that they would be excited and fascinated and be craving for you, Lord. And as they do, you will grant them what they are praying for even God. Lord, we pray that their focus is on you. We pray that during this week, there will be revelations of you, Lord. That during this week, Lord, with our excitement, you will come through for us, God. And we pray even, Lord, that during this week, we will see you work in the lives of everyone who would be joining our prayer and fasting, Lord. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that there would be answered prayers that there would be worship and praising and thanksgiving even after this week, even within this week, Lord. Lord, we pray that everyone who would be joining, everyone who would be joining us, Lord, that they would always focus, Lord, on worshiping you even more during this week. That during the times that we might be missing our meals, we would be using it to spend time with you even, God. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, anyone in our church, anyone who would be watching this video, Lord, we speak healing unto them, Lord. We pray that even at this very moment, they would feel your hand of healing upon them, Lord. They would feel the heat of your healing upon their bodies, Lord. People, Lord, who are in bed, yung mga nakaratay po, Panginoon, Lord, we pray na babangon sila ngayon, lalakas ang katawan. nila ngayon, Lord. Ano man po ang pinanggagalingan, pinagmumulan ng sakit na ito, we command you to live, live the sons and daughters of Almighty God. Let there be healing and as the healing comes, let there be praise unto your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day. We dedicate to you this week of prayer and fasting. Let your presence be thick unto every household who would be joining the prayer and fasting, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we will see results of all of this, Lord. We will see your presence and your hand moving in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your fasting. God bless you. Shalom.